Hi and welcome to Synapse. Um, I know it's been a while since I posted the last video. I'm completely aware of that. Um, but never mind, we're gonna start it again. Um, okay, with that note, uh, let me just tell you guys that we're starting with uh, cardiovascular system. Okay, uh, it's a pretty important topic and much requested topic as well. So I thought we'll start with the basics of cardiovascular system. Okay, so let's begin here. Okay, cardiovascular system. So the thing about uh, um, any of the medicine topics is that if if you're thorough with the physiology and the pathology aspects of it, the, basically the basics you would really really love the subject the topic and that would not be a burden for you right like you would really, really enjoy reading it so my job is to just do that i'm going to make the basics clear okay things that were i found difficult i'm going to make those clear so that um, when you open your medicine textbooks or uh, when you try to read cardiovascular system you would you would feel like okay i know this and you can totally manage it or something you will you will start having fun as you read the topic okay so let's begin with cardiovascular system uh, let's just have a look at the cardiac cycle okay because without this cvs is nothing okay so let's just start with cardiac cycle. Uh, you guys must be knowing it. All I'm going to do is just like write a brief outline so that we just brush it up and then start with a topic. Okay. So first, okay, we'll start with the atrial system. Okay. So now what happens? Atria contracts. Okay. Atria has emptied its blood into the ventricles. Now it's time for the AV valves to close. Okay, the atrioventricular valves will close. So that is basically your mitral valve on the left side and the tricuspid valve on the right side. Okay, so they close and then what happens is that now your ventricles, they are isolated, right? So the AV valves are closed and so are the tricuspid valves, that is the aortic and the pulmonary valves. Okay, so now ventricle is an isolated chamber. So now what happens the pressure inside the ventricle will go on increasing okay because the volume is increased and the the muscle will the myocardium will start contracting so that phase of contraction is called as the isovolumetric contraction okay because there's no change in the volume there's only change increase in the pressure okay of the ventricles mm -hmm. okay fine so now the pressure within the ventricles is so high okay it is it now increases beyond the pressure that is in the great vessels right so hence now it's the time for the uh i the aortic sorry aortic and the pulmonary valves to open okay and now when the valves are open the pressure gradient is there Ventricle is at a higher pressure, right? So hence the blood gushes out of the ventricle. So you have the rapid ejection phase, okay? You have the rapid ejection phase. Okay, so the pressure gradient reduces and still ejection continues. So that is the slow ejection phase, okay? So once that happens, the ventricular pressure will reduce, okay? But the aortic pressures and all, they remain at 120. Okay, once the ventricular pressure goes below 80, the blood tries to rush back, get into the ventricles, and this is prevented by the closure of the aortic and the pulmonary valves. Okay, I'll just write it as tricuspid valves. So the tricuspid valves close. Okay, so this is going to produce the second heart sound. Okay, the closure of the AV valves, the uh, the uh, atrioventricular valves will produce S1, that is the first heart sound. Okay, so the tricuspid valves close. Okay, again, what happens? The chamber will become, the ventricle will become an isolated chamber. So it will go into relaxation now. So it, now it becomes the isovolumetric relaxation. Okay, let's just put it here. The isovolumetric relaxation, the ventricular pressure will reduce further. Okay, now the pressure is low in the ventricles. Okay, compared to the 
atrium so hence there will be opening of the AV valves so the AV valves open you have the rapid inflow phase okay rapid inflow phase okay so because there is more pressure the and also the gravity okay due to that the blood in the atria will quickly rush into the ventricle that is called as a rapid inflow or the um, rapid inflow phase or filling phase okay so by rapid filling phase next the gradient is low so now we have this slow filling phase okay next what happens is we start the, what is what marks the end of the ventricular diastole it is atrial systole so atria contracts this is responsible for 30 percent of the like last 30 percent filling of the ventricle okay fine so 30 percent of the end diastolic volume is contributed due to the atrial systole so once the atria contracts empties all its blood into the ventricle so the same cycle continues so that is why it's a cardiac cycle see it's a loop okay this keeps happening okay rather this uh, one cycle happens within a period of 0.8 seconds so you know how quick all of this is happening okay fine so now once we have seen this let us uh, go ahead and discuss our topic proper okay so what we wanted to talk today was regarding uh, pulse okay so I, I know people you guys might be like oh my god this is such a basic and boring topic but um, it is really really important and let's just try to understand it okay probably you might not have analyzed it this way okay so don't go and pause the video just go ahead and watch it and tell you why so um the pulse okay arterial pulse this is what we're talking about we all have seen a curve which looks like this okay let me make it okay check that so there is a curve that looks like this okay and we have seen this during our physiology days correct but have you have you guys kind of understood why each of these curves appear and what is the significance of each part of the curve okay that's what i'm going to do now fine so let's break it up let's make it very very simple okay i'll just tell you this part is the ascending part of the curve everyone knows that ascending wave okay and this is obviously the descending wave okay now the ascending wave is also called an acrotic wave okay and the descending wave is also called the dichrotic wave Fine. Now, uh, this prominent notch that is seen here, okay, so that notch is actually called a dichrotic notch. Okay, simple dichrotic wave has a notch, so it's called a dichrotic notch. Okay. Um, what is the importance of this dichrotic notch? It marks the closure of the aortic valve okay if you guys remember so cardiac cycle the closure of the aortic and the pulmonary valve okay gives rise to s2 so that is your second heart sound okay fine now i'll just mention it here so if this is your s1 closure of the aortic valve you just saw that closure of av valve okay there, there begins the systole so Closure of S1, sorry, uh, closure of AV valve produced S1, and that is where uh, your systole started, that is isovolumetric contraction started, correct? Now this progresses, all those things we just saw, all the parts of the cycle will appear, okay, and then S2, okay, that is closure of the, a, uh, the aortic and the pulmonary valves. So when that happens, the ventricle will start relaxing, it will go into isovolumetric relaxation phase. So now, simply set, put here, uh, between S1 and S2, okay, the heart is in ventricular contraction. 
and between S2 to the consecutive S1, this is your diastole. Okay, actually saying figuratively, this is a little off because I'll tell you why. Systole is shorter than diastole. So if you do one thing, you just put it here. Okay, makes sense. This is S2. So this is diastole. So we know the systole is shorter than uh, diastole. So this is how it is. So you get confused next time. Between S1, S2 is systole. S2 to the consecutive S1. The next S1 is the diastole. Okay. So once this is made clear. Okay. Now you guys know what is this diacrotic notch. So diacrotic notch is closure of the aortic valve. Now you must tell me here that this corresponds to your S2. Make sense? Now we started this here. Okay, it, is, it all starts with the ventricular systole. Correct? So this marks S1. So now this phase is systole. Okay, systole includes the ascending wave and a part of the descending wave. Okay, fine. Now that we have understood the parts of the curve. Okay, before that, let me add one more thing. So this part is called as the percussion wave. This is called as the percussion wave. And this is called as the tidal wave. So ascending wave has two parts, the percussion wave and the tidal wave. Okay, fine. Now let us see why we get each of these curves. Okay, why is it the way it is? Starting with this is was ascending. Okay, we had two bumps. We had a percussion wave and we had a tidal wave. Then we have the diacrotic notch and the descending part. Okay, so now what happens is ventricle contracts. Okay, so there is ventricular systole. So this uh, ventricular systole. Okay, it will be passed on to the greater vessels. Now imagine there is a motor and there are pipes attached to it. Okay, your motor is the heart and the pipes attached to it. This is like a pump what you can see outside. So now there is a vibration in the pipes. When the motor is on, you can feel the vibration in the pipes. Now that is exactly what happens with the heart. Heart pumps, okay, it is your motor. And then as it pumps, okay, the blood gushes through the great vessels. Those vessels will vibrate the vessel wall the arterial walls will vibrate okay the arterial wall vibrates or vibration of this okay so now what happens is that the heart is pumping uh, this is your vessel okay so the vibration will pass along the arterial wall so this vibration travels faster than your blood that is coming through the vessel Okay, who goes faster? The vibration. So when you're holding your hand at the radial uh, artery, on the radial artery, trying to feel for the pulse, the first part of the systole, okay, the, the ascending wave, okay, and to be specific, the percussion part of the ascending wave is because of the vibration of the arterial wall, okay, so the arterial wall vibration will result in the percussion wave, simple. The point is the artery your, what are you doing? It is the percussion. Basically, it is coming and percussing your fingers. Okay, you can imagine it like that. You can remember it. So the arterial wall vibrates, and that vibration is felt. So that is the percussion wave. So blood comes a little later. Correct. So when the blood comes, you are going to have the tidal wave. Okay. So you know, tidal always refers to volume. It could be in recipe we have the tidal volume, which refers to the you know volume of air. So even even for the term tidal waves in the in the oceans, okay, it means the volume of water. So tidal refers to the quantity which is volume. So here it's the blood that is coming in the vessel. Okay, so that is the tidal wave. Now let us look at the descending part. Okay, so that is the diacrotic. Now. I, I'll just draw something here. If, if the percussion wave is true and the tidal wave is true, okay, and then you're going to have this, this kind of a thing should be there, okay. Why is this um, curve having some kind of, you know, projection away from the center, okay.
okay why is this happening okay it could have just been a rapid fall okay but it does not happen i'll just tell you why so if this is a person okay imagine he's a person this is the, these are the upper limbs and these are the lower limbs okay now uh, the time that the um, okay i'll tell you one more thing before i explain this see we have the arteries the bigger arteries they become medium sized arteries and then it becomes small sized arteries and then you'll have the arterioles arterioles okay so these are the high resistance systems okay now when that vibration okay it passes from the bigger arteries the medium sized arteries the smaller arteries hits the arterioles high resistance and it is going to reflect back Okay, so the vibration is going to reflect back. Cool. Okay, now this happens in the upper limbs as well as the lower limbs, correct? And if you look at the proximity of the limb to the heart, okay, the upper limbs will reflect this at a faster, at, I mean a little earlier than the lower limb. So because the blood has to go to the uh, lower limb, the arterial, the arteriolar system and then get reflected back okay so because of the delay okay the lower limbs reflect it a little later you have the dichrotic wave okay simply it is just a reflected wave from the lower part of the body so i hope the uh, mechanism of appearance of the dichrotic uh, wave is pretty clear so let us sum this up let's go back to where we started Okay, so I guess the cardiac cycle is pretty clear. Once you know that, okay, just this. Fine, we have the ascending wave and then we have the descending wave. The ascending wave has the percussion wave and the tidal wave. Percussion wave is because of the vibration of the arterial wall that is felt, okay. And then a tidal wave is actually due to the gushing of the blood, okay, the volume, okay, inside the vessel wall. And... Um, Dichrotic notch is because of the closure of the aortic valve, so that's where your S2 appears. Okay, and the rest of the basically the dichrotic wave is because of the reflection, okay, of the vibration, okay, from the high resistance system that is the arterioles. And uh, there is a delay between the reflection of the uh, wave from the upper limb and the lower limb okay because of this discrepancy we have a slowly falling curve instead of a rapid fall okay 